Yo, what's up guys? AFC Adinho here and welcome to a new video. Today we're going to do something different. Instead of playing PvP, I'm going to show you guys what is in my opinion the best money-making method in Poké MMO in 2024. Um, it is basically doing the Elite Four, rebattling the Elite Four. And yeah, some of you might not agree, but it's in my opinion it is the best uh, money making method because if you use an amulet coin for gym rebattles you'll make around 200 to 250k per hour but if you actually rebattle the elite four with amulet coins every region is about 100k and you can easily do three regions in one amulet coin and we don't have to use any revives we do need to use a few potions though but that's going to be an investment. And for every battle, we do use X-Speeds. Um, they cost about 2k each. So basically, 3 times 5 is 15. So we need we need about 15 X-Speeds. Which is 30k. That's going to be an investment. We need an amulet coin. Which is about 19, 19k. So let's say about 50 roughly is what we are investing here and you make about 300k 300k beating all of them a few potions here and there however you also get 6k battle points which means um that's equivalent to about 60k so everything you invest already Get away with that but you also have some spare time left sometimes you're able to do four regions which is 400k uh, but you can also just battle morimoto and use the remaining time to battle gym leaders which is about 13k each because usually you have about 10 to 20 minutes left on the last after the third region uh, but it is usually more consistent to just uh, do the gym battles at morimoto because Morimoto also gets 25k. So that's basically what we're going to do today. Um, I am planning to make a full detailed guide on the strategy I'm using. I don't want to go too in-depth in this one. In this video, I just want to focus on doing the run. And, talk and talking you guys through it. Um, I have the timer on screen as well. So we, so we can basically time ourselves. I also, as you guys can see on the, on the top left screen, I have zero zero poke yen there just to see how much money we get at the end of this right after we've done after you we used one amulet coin and when you start guys make sure you have the strings um downloaded as well because they're gonna speed up this process and before we go into these battles a few things you need to keep in mind the elite four members are using pvp sets so um, they're not going to be random bad moves. They use PvP sets. So the defensive Pokemon are running defensive sets. And offensive Pokemon have scarves, life, life orbs, etc. And they usually go for the super effective move. Um, if they cannot kill you, they switch out to a Pokemon that has a super effective move. For instance, if we use Chansey and they with something like chandelier they're gonna switch out and maybe switch into lucaria which has close combat and then you know the the fighting type is coming that's what our strategy is go going to revolve around and um they also also when you try to set up they might switch out defensively if they have a counter and it can either be a defensive counter or, or it can be an offensive counter that is bulky enough to take a hit and if they switch once in that scenario, they will most likely do it again if the same scenario happens. And last thing to note, the Elite Four Pokemon are not PP maxed. Because with this Gengar, for example, we're going to use an Anchor un strategy. But if we Anchor close combat, we have to keep in mind that they only have five close combats. So that's basically what I want to note. And obviously, when we, you are battling the Elite Four, you pop the Amulet coin when you're about to battle the champion and like i said guys if you are if you are only able to do three then it's better to use the amulet coin and if you 
are confident that you can do four, you can use the richest charm, but the richest charm is super expensive. And it's only about a 15k difference in profit, so um, I'll leave that up to you. But yeah, five minute intro, really long. Let's go into it. So I typically start in your Nova because this is usually the one that is the that, that takes the longest. But it is like I said, guys, we're gonna lead with Chansey. I'm gonna turn on the timer and make sure to have the strength because you're gonna skip all this dialogue. So we see our our opponent leading off with Jolteon. In this case, they often switch to a physical attacker. Um, typically a fighting type, so we stealth rock, and do we see we do indeed see Lucario coming in. So what I'm going to do for us here is we're going into our Gengar, and we're gonna try to see what the team is. They are us usually often often using fixed teams, so that's one close combat. Now we encore, so he's locked in. And in a lot of times they stay in, but if they have a counter, something like an Umbrian or a Mandy Buzz, they're gonna switch out into it. Yeah, so this one has an Umbrian. So now we know he's always going to switch in Umbrian. He's always going to switch Umbrian, so we cannot repeat the same scenario again. So what I'm gonna do here is I am going for Chansey again. Because we want to force back in the Lucario to come in. Because for this I have another strategy. Specifically for Lucario. And this is what something I wanted to do in the beginning. But I just wanted to show you guys how this works. Because later on you're going to see that Encore will work. And they do stay in. So now I'm going into Gliscor. Because I actually have a spreadsheet. In which you can see... Uh, which teams they are using and which moves they have this lucario won't have um this lucario won't have ice punch so he close combats again and the reason he's doing that much damage to us is because he is uh, he is obviously life warped and we're just going to keep setting up on this We are really bulky here. And typically after the second one, I use I used uh, the X speed. I usually set up two times because if they for some reason switch, we're at plus four. However, since this is a defensive glide score, I, I do want to go for a plus six because he has an Umbrian in the back, which we can kill with Earthquake. Which we can't kill with Earthquake. So, we're going to plus 6. He gets paralyzed again. Obviously, he cannot kill us um, anyway. So, that, that didn't really matter. Uh, and now, we're going to Earthquake. And look, I haven't you I ha don't have to use a potion here. Typically, you don't have to use a potion if they switch out on the first turn. And since I got that X speed, I'm faster than Jolteon. So, for the, for the Frail Fast Pokemon, we use Facade because it has more PP. But against defensive Pokemon, since Earthquake is our most uh, powerful damaging move, we use Earthquake. And I'm positive that Foul Play doesn't knock us out if we don't kill. Uh, because we are really defensive. But um, w this is why we have the EV, EV spread. Like I, said, I do plan to make a dedicated guide for this. And the reason we have Crunch is because some of the Elite Four members have Miss Magius or they have a Drift Blim. Which we cannot touch if we're only Earthquake Facade. Right here, I can use Crunch. It doesn't matter if he has Flame Body. Because we are poisoned already. And you, now you already see a pretty clean Sweeper. But it is good to check out the, the spreadsheet first. Because the only thing that really threatens Gliscor from physical attackers is uh, Ice Punch or Ice Fang. If they have that. So, and this is why I typically lead with Chansey. If they have some, if they lead with Lucario or another fighting type that has close combat, I do typically switch out. 
can't see can't take it but they can crit us they can they can get a certain roll and healing chancy with potions is expensive because that's a lot of hp this is miss magus so he's most likely going to oh use his focus plus that might be a zoroark actually um it's so much that might actually be a zoroark so what i'm actually gonna do is i'm gonna switch into gengar because he's most likely going to focus blast again So he used to focus blast. This is gonna be the third. Gotta keep in mind they're not PP maxed. But this is gonna be the third, and now we're gonna start start nasty plotting up. He stays in, so that means he most likely doesn't have a counter. That's four. Mm. Use this. for the anchor has ended already used the focus blast against me and i should be able to anchor him once more and now we shouldn't have any focus blast anymore but now we're going for the nasty plot and he's probably going to use struggle here but it's fine i I'm pretty okay. He's probably now gonna use str struggle because they're not PP max. So at this point, we're just just gonna kill him here. And it is indeed Zora Bark because I don't think Miss Magius gets. I don't think Miss Magius gets Focus Blast. We see Drapion coming in. Drapion can use Crunch here. Um, I am actually gonna nasty pull up again. We're Focus Ash there. Earthquakes. Because we don't we don't kill Drapion there. So now we go for Hidden Power. Which should knock him out. And if he, has, if he has something with a priority move, he's gonna use it versus me. Something like a Bishar, perhaps. But Gliscor doesn't have priority. We already have the X-Speed. We're just gonna Shadow Ball here. There's the Miss Mag. It doesn't matter if he has a choice car fern. But a plus four hidden power is not gonna kill a neutral mon. Samurott could have a priority move. So now we do wanna swap out. And I can just go into Polyrap. As he goes for a grass knot. Obviously, th these things are not guaranteed, of course. But um, this gives an opportunity to heal Chansey. Like I said, the first region is, is typically the, the most difficult one. It is typically the most difficult one, but this is where you can typically take your time. And he does go into his Bisharp, which is fine. I get off my Thunder Wave. And now we can just go into our life score. And we can set, set up on this as well. He uses low kick. It... it was a bit unfortunate that uh, our, our opponent used the, um, the Miss Magius. Uh, the Zoroark in the beginning and focus blast into it. They typically don't do that, but... Uh, now we can just set up on this and we should outspeed Salmon Rod as well. Because generally you, you'll you only need a uh, one. You used to use one. But we use a bit of speed on this Glide score. And we're just going to figure it out. If he kills us, so be it. I didn't really want to... Um, okay. But that's, that is a bit unfortunate. So we need... We had to use the, the thing, but it's fine. Then he's most likely scarfed. <laughs> and this is why we this is why we used um This is why we used the X speed as well. 
but it was a bit unfortunate on the um, it was a bit unfortunate on the lead part because Zoroark usually doesn't stay in but he spent fo focus blast and it's not something we can abuse if we if he's if he clicks it on our chance here right so now that kind of shit happens often and we're gonna revive and then we're gonna use our potions so we just to heal everything um, obviously, like Samurai could be. Samurai could have been Aqua Jet, and I didn't want to use the revive on my Gengar, but perhaps we should have just stayed in Wing Gengar and just accepted it. This For this instance, our opponent doesn't lead with uh, something like this. Um, a special attacker, so this time we do switch out because, like I said, ch healing Chansey is a lot of money. And he uses high jump kick. Whenever they use high jump kick, I just go for the kill. Because it's typically not worth setting up on them. And he uses Snorlax. Which means we can go into Metagross, use Trick. And then st set up uh, whatever he wants to do. He goes for Crunch. It's fine. Now we use Trick. And he gave us leftovers, which is nice. And he uses Body Slam, which is fine. He paralyzes us, which is a bit annoying. Just a bit annoying, but now we can just Stealth Rock. This is a bit of the RNG uh, I mentioned. And I can basically uh, go into my Chandelure. Because we know he's locked in. And typically when you don't have a type advantage like this, they don't switch out. Exactly, and the, uh, this is the idea. I'm basically, we're, we're locking him into a certain move and now we're going to set up. Uh, for, for Chandelure as well, I s typically set up two times and then use, um, use the X speed. However, in this instance, I'm going to set up a bit more. Especially on your first run. Because you, and now you you don't have your amulet coin active. I I'm also streaming on my or recording on my full screen. But uh, I'm going to, to plus four because he might have something in the back. Who knows? And we can just just attack here. Because right now Chandelure should sweep. Obviously Snorlax is is thick fat. That's why he was able to take that hit. But now I'm gonna energy ball. Which should be enough. Not enough. Wow. Snorlax is really bulky, man. <laughs> That's crazy. Because I'm plus four Chandelure here. Like, I'm not kidding. But we should be able to sweep the rest and Chinchino doesn't, doesn't really matter. We just knock this out. And just sweeping through this really nicely. I use one revive, but that's a bit of, uh, it might be a bit me, because if we just kept with Gengar, we would have swept as well. If you actually study these teams and know exactly which Pokemon have which sets, you can be really efficient here. I can find, from the Pokemons I saw now, I know I can just go to plus two. Could have gone to plus two and swept there as well. But we want to be efficient there. We just want to make sure that we that we get it down. And I didn't heal Chandelure because Ch Ch Chandelure usually doesn't get damaged. But now we have the last one. And I will use my Paralyze heal because it's... It, it, it is good to have these as well. Oh, do I not? Do I not have it? No. It's always good to have a para have antidote or paralyze heal those kind of things. But now we're gonna use our potion. Oh, will heal also gives you something back. But let's just assume we had a paralyze heal there. <laughs> and this one, I'm also still gonna lead with Chansey, just in case they don't lead with a physical fighting type. This, he, this one leads with Metagross. 
And th since Mana Gross is not a fighting type, I'm more, more okay with taking that attack. He switches into Conkeldor, which is okay. And Conkeldor most likely going for a fighting type move. That's usually the reason they switch. So now we're going to go into Gengar. And like I said, if they don't have a hard counter to this, they're not going to switch out. So we're going to try now. So we're going to Encore because he's most likely going to stay in. And if they switch out, they're going to make that same switch later on. So then, then we ditch this strategy. But now he stays he stays in because he doesn't have he doesn't have a straight up count or something like Umbri or Mandibus that can easily take these hits. Keep in mind they're not PP maxed, but he only used once. So we're gonna nasty plot up again. Uh sometimes this trainer has crafty, so I'm typically go to plus six against this. So basically how we do this is uh, uh we're encore again on the turn it ends. Now, obviously, in the best case scenario, uh, they're going to stay in against you on all those things. But yeah, we're using our X speed. And now we're going to use our na last nasty plot. Now we're at plus six and we can sweep uh, this guy. And again, in this one, we didn't lose any HP. So we're really efficient and we, we can just shut up all this. Sixteen minutes about about sixteen minutes in. Metagross comes in, which should die as well. We only use hidden power fighting for things that are for super effective moves. So if we face a dark type, something resists Shadow Ball, for example, but that's when we use hidden power fighting. On a steel type. Crocodile, for example, here, but sometimes this trainer has crafty, that's why I typically go to plus six against this. Looks right. And if you have a super effective move with power, like with chandeliers, then use the super effective move on chandelier. You want to guarantee the kills. Like saving PP is good but you want to make sure they die because you're gonna lose a lot of times a lot of time if you don't kill so we're about 17 minutes in i barely lost anything i used a few potions on only and now we're about to battle alder i'm not healing chandelure metagross chance he's still full hp so that's looking good I use one revive, but typically you don't need to use a revive. But it's usually when you mess up yourself. I kind of messed up there. You can. This is the last step you can take, and now we can use our amulet coin. And you're gonna see it on screen as well. So in this one as well, we lead with Chansey. See what he does. Full Corona is not physical fighting type. We're just going to stay in and click Stealth Rock. And he's most likely going to switch out there. And again, we didn't lose any HP. Now Lucario comes in. And Lucario, this one could have Ice Punch, but then he's Scarf. That's, that's just some prior knowledge. I'm going to still go into Gengar. As he uses High Jump Kick. And because he used High Jump Kick, I'm just going to kill him here. We cannot set up on this Lucario, so it makes no sense trying to set up. Because I can use a nasty plot, but it's still not it's still not gonna net me a kill. So right here, we can go into Polyrath. Peporian doesn't really do anything. That's why that's why we have this guy. And I'm gonna try uh, setting up the belly drum here. He did use Hydro Pump. Oh, I didn't put Citrus Berry on this. <laughs> I didn't put Citrus Berry on this. Oh, that's that's bad. That's actually bad. Um, I'm going to go Metagross then. And we're going to trick him. I should have gone Met Metagross initially, actually, and, and used Trick. So that's, that's my bad. 
But I didn't put Citrus Berry on it, which is kind of bad on me. I'm gonna go into this, which is going to force... Which is going to force a switch, most likely. So we're gonna Thunder Wave. You already see that I'm taking so freaking long to beat this. Right here, um, we can go into Gengar because this one has superpower. Or close combat. And now, I don't know if he has a counter, so I'm going to Encore here. And then we can still try to sweep. Sandslash. Okay, so Sandslash can live a Shadow Ball. However, this is why we have Gliscor, because he's going to go for the super effective move, right? Earthquake. So we get in this. And I'm going to try to set up here. And let's see what he uses. Stone Edge. We should take that. Oh, he crit me. But look at how well Gliscor takes this, right? And he now he's most likely not going to switch out. So we're going to keep setting up. And now we're going to sweep with Gliscor without locking him into anything. Because Gliscor can... In a lot of cases, Gliscor can just sit there against physical attackers. And we know Sandslash doesn't have Ice Punch. We know Sandslash doesn't use Ice Fang. So, yeah, we're, go we're going to plus six because he does have that Vaporeon. And now we're going to start sweeping him. Sandslash is pretty bulky. He has a pretty high defense. So now we're going to use Earthquake. And that's basically the idea with the team. You're going to look for these kind of sweeps. Like, I should be faster than Vaporeon as well. We use Earthquake on him. I'm just going to sweep his team. And I'm going straight to the Sinnoh region. This one took a bit longer because I kind of messed up with the uh, Polyrath. Which is my bad. Because my Polyrath... Apparently my Polyrath doesn't have an item. <laughs> <laughs> Which is kind of bad, so I have to fix that in a second. But like I said, Gliscor is just going to sweep this. But now we, now we kind of want to be fast, so... We want to skip all this. 2k battle points. It doesn't show the money, but... <laughs> You guys can see on screen, right? I got 99k. Because we started at zero. Because I wanted to show you the money gains. And now we need to go ASAP to the next region. What I typically like to do is just do this. Actually, no. Um... We're going to see if we can do four regions in one coin. It is really unlikely. But we're just going to try. So we're going to go to Sinnoh next. Go to the league. If I if I feel like we don't have enough time, uh, then we're not going to do it. Then we're just going to go back to Unova. Battle Morimoto. I do have to put the Citrus Berry on Holy Rev. If we still have Citrus Berries... Okay. So. Okay. Bit of time wasting, but. Elisa with Flygon. Flygon is not a physical fighting type. He can run superpower, but it's not stab, so Chansey usually is able to take that. So we're, we're just going to click Staldrak here. He's switching out, so most likely a fighting type. Goes into Scizor. And Scissor is not running close combat. It, it runs super power because these are old PvP sets. So we're going to go Gliscor. Because here's the thing. I can We cannot use Ankur with Gengar because he can use Bullet Punch to turn after. But he just lowered his attack. So he's going to do less damage to us now. 
So now we can start Swords Dancing. He's gonna bullet punch us. But look at how little that does now. This is why I really like Gliscor as a sweeper. Because I don't have to give him potions. And we now can just start setting up. Really nice. Um, obviously, it would be nice to have him on Roost. But you guys saw why I use Crunch on this. Miss Maggie is Drift Blim. And now we're going to plus six. And yeah, this is basically a sweep already on the first one, which is really nice. So if we can finish this one before it hits uh, uh, 40 on a timer, that's, that is really good. But even if it's 35, it's still fine. If it's if it's 40, we can still aim to do a fourth region. But if it's 35, we just go for three regions and finish the rest with um, the um, the more remote home. But you don't want to do four regions and miss out on the last one, because that's a lot of money wasted. Glass cross are usually able to take something like uh, Aqua Jets because of the physical defense. And Glasgow would be able to sweep more if, we, if he has a roost. But yeah, like I said, the crunch is so valuable in that, in that regard. So just being able to sweep with him like this, it's really nice. And I won't get him at full HP here. But that, this is pretty close to full HP. Now Drapion comes in. And we just won't go... We just want to go for the guaranteed kill, which is Earthquake. And then we swept this one. Now we go to the next. Agatom. Wish Gas, which is a water type. It's not ideal for Gliscor. However... Chance he can still get up rocks. It, it is really important to get up rocks, guys. It is really important to get up rocks. And I'm already I'm already preparing myself for um so it is leftovers. What I'm gonna do here is I go into glass quick because I'm not sure if if he has a if he has a fighting move he could have and i'm gonna scout for ice punch because now basically what we're gonna try is use trick with metagross we can we can live an earthquake with metagross he switched out against us which means he might not have uh ice punch now we just use trick and that this blast was just choice carved this blast was just choice carved so what we're gonna do here we're gonna go into holy wrath and we're gonna try setting up here he switches out which is a bit unfortunate but we are actually faster than dome fan so what i'm gonna do here is i'm just gonna stay in because i'm fat i'm faster than this guy 100% so basically what I'll do is I'll, I'll use I'll just drain punch like we need to make something happen I'll just drain punch again uh, the reason I don't wanna don't wanna a belly the reason I don't wanna use X speed there is I don't have that information yet However, now I can use X speed because he shouldn't kill me even with hidden power grass because this is Scarf Blastoise. Like I said, this does take a bit of PvP knowledge, but now we should be able to sweep with Polyrath.
Parasect is partly a bug type, which is annoying. So I have to click Ice Punch. He could have a spore effect on me. But I should have I should get Polyrath to fill. And I didn't lock him into any moves. Which is already really good. Yeah, we're, we're just sweeping our way through. And I still... I use one revive, but let's not count that revive, guys. <laughs> because it, we really don't need to use a revive. You guys see it. So now we sweep this one. It really depends on what they have in, of course. But yeah, like I said, it takes PvP knowledge doing it this way. We're mainly invest in potions and XP's. That's basically all we need. So again, make sure to heal Metagross because Metagross usually is the one that needs to take a hit so we can use Trick on him. He leads with Steelix. Steelix is not a physical fighting type, so we're just staying in and clicking Stealth Rock. So he's most likely... He's either going to Earthquake or he's going to go and switch into a fighting type. I actually go with Maractus, so he might not have a fighting type. Maractus is actually a special attacker. So what I'll just do is... First, I will, I will just teleport immediately. As this is indeed using Endeavor. Look at how much damage he's doing that to me, man. Endeavor... I'm gonna go Metagross and we trick. It's better to heal Chansey from half HP anyway. We just trick air. Hidden power, which is probably hidden power fire if that's super effective. It's annoying that it doesn't show super effective, but uh, they usually go for the super effective move. So now I'm gonna go into Chandelure. And we're going to call him and maybe he's going to sw switch out if he has a counter. And there's no real counter to this. So, cool. Basically, a counter with a type advantage or anything. So, this one pretty smoothly as well. I'm going to plus four here because he has a Houndoom. Don't forget to use the X-Speed. Houndoom with Flash Fire, which resists my Shadow Ball. We don't want to take any chances there. So for this one, we do have to heal Chansey, of course. But now, uh, we're just going to sweep air. And uh, yeah, I have Shadow Ball for him, which is fine. So it's all about the PvP knowledge or situations in which you can set up. I don't think I will be able to finish this before 40 minutes. But Lucian is already the last member. So we're probably going to finish before 35. And I'm rarely using a revive, guys. Like, I used it once, and that was because of a mistake. However, we do want to heal here. So we're going to heal Chansey to max. 21 potions for half HP. That's what I mean. That This is why we don't want to take a fighting move. Because we're going to... You have to use a lot of potions there. Here's Gallade. So, in this scenario, I don't want to take a Sacred Sword. He can be Life Orb and knock us out. So, we're going to go into Gengar. He actually swaps into Gallade. So, that was probably Zoroark. That was probably Zoroark. Gallade can have Shadow Sneak, can have Psycho Cut. We're gonna switch into Metagross now. Because they always go for the super effective move. 
if the first one was Gallade, we would have made the same exact playing and switch into this. Because now we're going to trick. And he's going to lose his life orb. But let's see if he's able to, to, hit, to hit KO us here. I'm going to Stealth Rock. He actually knocked this out, which is a bit unfortunate. Um, I, I thought we would live this, but... I did, I did EV my guy incorrectly. I did EV my guy incorrectly, but it's fine. That should be a max defense meta gross, which should live too. Anyway, he should be he should be bringing in the the Galate. This is why I I typically just go for three regions. I missed it in a way if it's whatever. We go into Gengar. He's choice carved. And now we're going to try setting up nasty plots. Ranzong. Okay. So next time we're going to try using Chandelure in that situation. We sh probably should have done that initially. Like, even I'm still learning. Even I'm still learning. I'm just thunderwaving here again. Because we wanna we wanna be sure that he switches into this. Now I'm going into Chandelure. Because we're looking at his other Pokemon, right? And checking Slowbro is not really a counter because we do super effective damage against him. So let's see if he switches out here. Nope, he stays in. Because these NPCs are pretty smart still. Obviously, in this in this scenario, we we will be able to sweep, which is fine. I had to use two rev I have to use two revives though, which is typically not what I typically I don't have to use any. But it is what it is. And I like going for plus four. Like I said, we're focusing on doing three regions. So now we're going to start sweeping. We use Shadow Ball, but we're plus four, so it doesn't matter if Sorowark is in. And this is why the Stealth Rock is also important. So. Any potential focus ash we're dealing with, we remove some, which is really nice. And we're just keep going for the super effective moves there. And a revive is about 3k, which is expensive if, have to, if, the, if you would have to use it every time. Like I said, I rarely have to use it. And in some cases, I don't even have to use a potion. Like in this game, I would only have to use a potion on Metagross. So, and then we only have to battle Cynthia. Oh, I actually didn't get up Stealth Rock. <laughs> I forgot. I didn't get up Stealth Rock because my, my Metagross died. This is why it's important to run a max defense Metagross, guys. Because then I would li definitely live, live two Sacred Swords. He leads up with Garchomp. Garchomp is not a physical fighting type, so we're just going to stay in and click Stealth Rock. He uses Earthquake. He could be Scarfed. So we're just going to look out for that. And now I'm going to switch into Gliscor. Because if he's not Scarfed, then Gliscor is still going to sit there. And since I don't necessarily have the type advantage, he might stay in for success. Yep. And look at how well we're taking this. Obviously, he can miss Dragon Rush too. I actually want to use an X-Speed now. Because I don't want to get flinched. <laughs> and we should be able to get to plus 
uh, six here. And like I said, he can still miss because it's a lower accuracy move, but he, he wouldn't be able to 2-hit KO me anyway. So and now we're going to plus six and Gliscor should be able to sweep Cynthia right now. Glasgow also not using Ice Fang. I don't think he learns Ice Fang, by the way. Jellicent comes in. And we actually have Crunch here, which is really decent. Earthquake would also knock him out. But uh, in case it scores body, I don't want to lose Earthquake. Superior comes in, which should die to Facade. This is why we have Facade as well. For the Grass types. And Gliscor does this so really well. Arcanine comes in, which could have Intimidate, but we're still plus 5, so still gonna be good for us. Earthquaking here. And we have 37 minutes, and 37 minutes, and we have all the time. Because I think. 55, 54, 53 or something is 53. About 17 minutes, maybe. We took uh it took us to do this. Because you have to keep in mind that we did have to travel from region to region. And yeah, that's another one. 198k from just doing those. I think even if you I, I'm not sure if logging out, I think I tried it with skip a lot of this part but uh, i don't know if logging out is the thing the, the strings are also helping us anyway i don't want to log out because it shows my password of, or it shows my login uh credentials but that's why i don't want to log out but it, with the strings it doesn't take that long anyway and we have 36 minutes left so now we're gonna go to the next one i'm gonna go to Sinnoh. you can do johto as well and johto is pretty easy but there 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 is no current spreadsheet of johto that's why um i recommend not doing johto you can use you can do kanto as well perhaps what i'll do is What I'll do in this video is I will show only the Elite Four battles. So I will show um I will show all the Elite Four battles and see how and show how consistent this team is without using many things. Again, Cactor, not a physical fighting type, so we're staying in. Even if he has a fighting move, chance he is extremely bulky. Goes for drain punch, obviously doesn't do that much to us. Because I'm fine healing of this damage. It's not that much anyway. And I'm going to switch into our Gliscor. Which can take a Drain Punch really easily. And I don't think Cacturn has Ice Coverage. I would look really stupid if he does right here. But we'll see. And he switches into Magnezone. If he switches into Magnezone, he probably has Hidden Power Ice. So what I'll do is I'll go into... Um, actually, if I go Mag... I go back into Chansey. And we're going to heal Chansey. If I go... The reason I cannot go Metagross... He uses Flash Cannon. Okay. I couldn't hit him anyway. So I'm going to Soft Boy Lear. Our Manhattan comes in. I'm actually going Glide Square here because he could technically go for Flare Blitz. Obviously, he can go for Super Power too. But we want to know if this is choice, right? So he lowered his stats again. And again, I'm going to try to set up here. Okay, cool. He doesn't switch. Because if Magnezone had 
Hidden Power Rise, he would have used Hidden Power Rise. I think he only switched into me because he had a counter in Air Balloon. But now, um, the Manhattan is most likely not going to switch out, so we can start staying in on this. This Darmanitan is probably choiced. Obviously, there was no way of knowing beforehand. So, Swords Dancing again. Yeah, typically you want to set up two times, but at this point I knew he was going to do that. And even at plus six, I'm, I am might be able to kill that Magnuson. Who knows? Actually, Magnuson is really bulky. But he won't be able to knock me out, so... We're gonna set up this guy. And Gliscor still full HP. No rules needed yet. Which is cool. And now we're gonna start sweeping. He goes into this. It's actually good that he goes into this early. Uh, because... Because um, I, I'll be able to heal with my poison heal a lot of the damage throughout this fight because he, he brought it in early. And now Magnus uh, Gliscor should be able to sweep his team. I should get three more healings off, meaning that I get to fill. Goes into Go Lurk. I will click Earthquake here instead of Crunch because even though it's super effective. Go look is really bulky, so I want to go for the more powerful move. And again, in this one, I didn't have to lose any HP. So, because I use Soft Boy with, with Chansey. This is why I think it's typically better to go for the. Um, this is why I think it's typically better to go for three regions. It's less stress on you, because you know you're gonna get a you're gonna get a 300k. You you are going to get the um, the battle points, the 6k battle points, which is basically 60k, so 360k. And then we're gonna have a lot of time to spare, so we're gonna beat Morimoto and a few gym leaders. So your profit is definitely gonna be over 300k. And all I did was use a bit of PvP knowledge. Like, the spreadsheet already shows the sets they have. In, the, in this instance, Dusknor actually has Ice Punch. Or could have Ice Punch. But, like I said, it, it is not it is not a physical fighting type, so we're staying in. Goes Lucario here, which is fine. And I'm going to switch into Gengar now. Because Dusknor is actually a counter to Gliscor counter in it can survive a hit so i'm gonna encore here and we're gonna see if um pb has a counter to us so we're gonna nasty split up and apparently not because he so he's a ghost type gym leader or elite four member so now we're gonna set up with gengar and this is why where, where the encore really comes in handy And then we're going to Encore. He used three now. Use the X speed. And typically, I don't go to plus six because Lucario could have a Focus Sash. So I am going to use Hidden Power Fighting now. Because he's still locked in. He, di he died, so he didn't have a Focus Sash. But sometimes I do have a Focus Sash. And now I'm just going to Shadow Ball the rest. Plus 4 should be enough for Zoroark as well. Like the other guy. This Knorr... In a lot of cases when you're full HP, they, they don't use the priority move. Like I said, the NPCs are getting smart. Uh, when when this Gengar strategy was first implemented, the NPC a lot of times just stayed in after Encore. 
no matter what they had in the back and then sweeping became really easy and then it becomes really easy doing four regions but if they constantly switch it makes it more difficult yeah a shadow ball here if i have less than 17 minutes then i'm definitely not gonna start Cantum. this one using protect for no reason <laughs> it happens it happens guys but again, um, didn't lose any HP here. This is the ice. This is the ice one. But really depending on what he does. Holy Ref can sweep. Gengar can sweep. Not typically a game for Lyscore. He goes Mian Shao. Mian Shao could have... High jump kick. So we're just gonna go Gengar again. If he uses high jump kick over close combat, we're just gonna kill him. Because then we cannot set up on this. So now we just shadow ball and try to set up on another thing. He actually switches out into Wall Rain. And Wall Rain is something Polyref can actually completely set up on. However, I am going into Chansey. Because I do want Stealth Rock before we start setting up one of the one of the important rules is get up oh my god like i said rng happens guys so we're gonna swap out and i'll just use metagross with stealth rock here i'll just stealth rock with this i can obviously trick him but then i have to take two close combats and he uses u-turn on me Goes into Miss Magius. Okay. So already a lot of time wasted. And this is why I don't think we're going to make four, make it to four regions. I'm going to Thunder Wave here. And now we're going to try starting. Uh, try setting up with Gengar. So we're going to go Gengar. Not, not try setting up, but le letting him die. Skarmory comes in. And this is something, uh, actually, the Gliscore can set up on. But what we can also do, because Gliscore might take too long. We can go into this. And we can just use Trick. If he stays and we take the leftovers, and then we can start setting up with Gliscore. Because in the NPC's mind, uh, Skarmory is a counter to Gliscor, but... So he will most likely not switch out in that scenario. He actually goes Blissey. And Blissey could technically have a perfective move, like Ice Beam. So we're, we're just going to scout for that first. We're going to go into Chansey, teleport around. Like I said, this is... Because the NPCs are pretty decent at switching out um, in, in in these kind of things. But now we're going to force that Gliscor situation. Because he's probably going to drill back again. Which Gliscor will completely heal off. Toxic. Oh, then he's probably going to switch out. But like I said, Stealth Rock is still here. I don't want to waste more time. <laughs> now I'm going to go into Polyrap. And we're just going to use Belly Drum now. Goes for Toxic. I am going to use X Speed. Because then I should still be faster than Skarmory and I can knock out Skarmory, of course. And what I'm actually going to do here as well, it's a bit risky. Um, I can obviously just Drain Punch, but I'm just going to use my Antidote because Ice Beam shouldn't kill me there. 
and then I'm gonna heal everything back later. You can freeze me there too. Um, obviously, the more consistent play would be to just drain punch there. But I'm playing for four, for three regions and doing uh, the other stuff. And this is the reason I wanted uh, the antidote off. Because I cannot drain punch this and I'm going to die to poison. Because I'm not able to heal on that turn. But in that scenario, using a full heal might be better. Since it actually gives you a bit of HP as well. But now Polyrath should be able to sweep. Skarmory is Scarf, but Skarmory at plus one is slower than me at plus two. So I should still be able to kill this. And then we have Drake. <clears throat> so I'm just gonna click Earthquake in case this is Rocky Helmet. Let's see. Never know. And Metagross took a bit of damage from Drill Pack. So we are going to heal Metagross. And I'm doing like I'm I'm doing I've been doing this for the for the past week or something I've been consistently doing this and I rarely have to use a use this this item I was oh I didn't heal Chansey which is actually a bit bad on my part but he should still shouldn't kill me he cannot flinch me I use waterfall which is fine I can use uh, polyrap there. As an immunity. Goes into Gallade. Which is actually a bit annoying. Because he can use both Sacred Sword. He can use both Sacred Sword. And he can use both the Psycho Cut. So I don't want to switch in Gengar in this scenario. So now I will go for the... Well he should go for Psycho Cut actually. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to scout if he has Ice Punch. And then we use Trick with Metagross. He does have Ice Punch indeed. And now we can use Trick. And if he locks himself into... Um, ah, give me the Focus Sash. Sacred Sword, I'm going into Chandelier. Chandelure is actually something they rarely switch out against. So let's let's try. Yeah, exactly. Chandelure is the one they rarely switch out against. For whatever reason. So we are able to set up call mines. I go to plus four, use the X speed. Um Lens or or Drake, I'm not sure if he has anything that outspeeds me. Or can, I think plus three is enough in this scenario. But generally I, I, I just like to go to plus four. Like, from this, I already know that we're not gonna make. Uh, we're, we're not gonna. We're not gonna beat this one and Kanto within this time limit. And if you. If you actually study these matchups, like study their teams they use, they have multiple teams. That's why it's difficult knowing exactly which sets they have. Then you know, because if you know the teams, if you know the sets, then setting up on them is going to be much easier. I'm going to energy ball this. But it's so freaking simple. Focusing on three regions and minimizing the revive uses. Like I used two revives, but th they were unnecessary if we didn't. That was because we, we made mistakes. I almost wanted to use energy ball because I thought it was a water type. <laughs> okay. So that's, that one opens and we want to heal Chansey. Because we're going to lead with Chansey. We want to heal this guy. 
And we could heal Gliscor, but I'm, I'm choosing not to because Gliscor is really defensive. And at this point, it doesn't matter if our Pokemon dies. It doesn't matter if our Pokemon dies because we don't have, there's no next battle. So he leads up with Waylord, which is not a fighting type, so chance he can stay in and click Stellrock. He uses Waterfall, which is completely fine. This is typically when they switch out. This one doesn't. I just turn wave. Like I don't think there's necessarily anything wrong with turn waving because it it's gonna it can help you later on as well. And this time I will switch into Polyrath because he he appears to be not switching air. And I will use Belly Drum in case he stays in, and he does stay in. If he switches out, we can still use Polyrath for water absorb when the for the next time he waterfalls but now i can use x speed he seems to not be able to touch me and it seems that we are able to sweep from here it should give us about 14 13 minutes to do more remoto and a few gym leaders and remember we got the battle points as well guys I, I don't think it's worth uh, using battle point charms, by the way, guys, because they they have gotten so freaking expensive that it's not worth it. You're not getting even if you're able to do four regions, it's not going to be worth it. You're, you're actually going to lose money on that. So typically I'll just go for the battle points. And like I said, 60k extra that's about 360k you're getting here just from the elite four i got 16 minutes we could technically uh, attempt kanto but if some rng shit happens it's not gonna be worth it guys if you have around 20 minutes you can do it Two nine two nine seven thousand. Skip the animation, and now we're gonna go straight to Unova. Maybe to be more efficient, you can um, do Unova last. But I feel like you know, if if I have to compare Unova, then I think Unova took me the longest in this run as well. So we're gonna do this, and we're gonna go straight to the focus center. And this is where you have to use multi-select, guys. This is where you have to use multi-select. So you go to your PC, have them all next to each other, multi-select them, and now you have them into your party. For the gym reruns, I just wanted to show you. However, we are going to. Like I'm, I'm not, I'm not being efficient with my time. But I'm not efficient with my time, but I just wanted to I wanted to make sure you guys saw. And now we have this this guy. Leads up with Mew, which is which is really interesting. Sometimes they do. But we're just gonna set up stealth rock here. He's switching out. He's probably going to go into exactly into a fighting type. So we can switch directly into Gengar. Basically the same strategy as you would use against the gym leaders. However, in this case, you might not you you might not need to use an um you might not need to use the um, the the X speed. I'm not going to use it in this case because we are out leveling them already. Because if max H max HP Gar jump in this it outspeeds his um it 
A max HP guard jump, a max speed guard jump outspeeds his Jolteon. Just in case he's Sash, by the way, I will use Encore. Like, I'm not losing anything on it. But I'm going, I'm going to stay at plus four here because there's no, there's no reason for me to go to plus six against uh, this level. But in case he has a Snorlax, I like to be at plus four. Would be really interesting if we could use Mew in PvP, by the way. I think the timer... So, basically one hour has already passed and we're in our fifth minute now. Jolteon, we outspeed Jolteon, even though Jolteon is really fast. This is why we don't need to use an X speed in this scenario. Yeah, we're basically going through this the same way. And then you can then, then you can pick up your gym rerun team. In this case, he has a Genghis Khan, which should die to plus four hidden power fighting. So we're gonna go to this one and look at our money we're at 320k this is what we already made we have 11 minutes left guys so you're gonna go to wherever your gym rerun team is and like i said we're, we're just gonna we're just gonna battle them like these are close to each other you could skip the fire one if you are annoyed by flash fire if you if you don't want to be dealing with flash fire but i would say i would be able to do in 10 minutes all all of them and probably one in the next city as well basically four gems which is about 50k remember we still have the battle points as well if we add that's that's 360k we made i don't know the exact amount of potions we used but we use two revives and in a lot of cases you don't even need to use a revive but at no point were we really struggling right so i'll, I'll probably make a separate video on battling kanto like the kanto and um and the jodo one Because this is typically how I do it. In one hour. And if I wanna if I wanna spend two hours, I, I do the Kanto and the Jodo one. And then do, do as many gym leaders as possible. And the beautiful thing about this here is that we our Typhlosions can beat the grass one without the need of sun. And this is way more profitable because in this in this amount you, you get 250k probably from gym gym rebattling in an hour but we already made more than that it's gonna be like a clickbait title <laughs> 400 f 
400k in one hour. <laughs> Something like that. Profit. Nah, I'm kidding. And what I typically like to do is move guard jump one up. Because that, my Typhlosion has Swift. Sometimes, uh, sometimes they don't have um, f Flash Fire Pokemon. Then you can even muscle through it with Explosion. Uh, just use your gym rerun team, guys. Like you would, the way you would normally do this. Gamerupt, unfortunately, avoided. Yeah, like I said, also in gym reruns, this this shit happens. But the main damage source is Garchomp, of course, and Typhlosion is just there for whatever. If we didn't miss, of course, then uh, that would have been a wrap. But yeah, we still have a bunch of time left, and I might even be able to um, to finish two, two more extra gems. We got a lucky flinch there, and Simisir should die as well if we connect our rock slide. Yeah, that's the thing with Rock Sly, guys. Oh, he's, he was a Charty Berry. <laughs> but he still died to the Swift. So, 359k is where we're at now. Before we do a straight follow up video with how much money we could get in that scenario. But yeah, this, this gym is really easy to get to as well. And after this one, I will probably battle Iris because she's the other one that's easy to get to. And I would say I can, because this, this exact run is something I did consistently for one, two weeks. And if you are really efficient, you are able to do, if you actually study what they use. Then I'm pretty sure you can do four regions. I was only able to do it like two times, <laughs> four regions on one charm. But the NPCs are really getting smart, guys. And like RNG stuff happens, misclicks happen sometimes, because this will take focus. This will take focus. So you get into explosions and we're going to spam eruption. Now this, this part might not be interesting, but it might be really interesting to see how much, um, it might be really interesting to see how much money we get in the end, right? Obviously, not everyone can do this because this will actually to to make a team like this, it's gonna be really expensive, and it takes PvP knowledge. Like I said, if something if something has Ice Punch, then Glide Square cannot really set up unless he has Roost. But if you if you use Roost, you're gonna be lacking another move. Yeah, 372. We still have some time left. Oh, I misclick. And if Cynthia is available, only in springtime you can battle Cynthia too. However, um, now, now it's still the Christmas event going, so Cynthia is not an option now. I also like to put Gliscor, um, not Gliscor, Typhlosion back. 
but I don't want to spend time wasting there. So we use this portal, and then we're gonna battle. Um, if she if she leads with Samurott, if she leads with Samurott and Superior, I typically don't use Tailwind, because if they use a Grass Pledge and Water Pledge, you're just it's gonna be doomed for you. <laughs> And if, if we had a, even a bit more time, you can do two NPC trainers, which give a lot of money. I might be able to... Nah, I don't think I'll be able to get to them. But... And I'm not even being really efficient with my time. Like, I've been wasting time showing you certain stuff. Like, you can definitely do this, you, you can definitely do this faster than me. But me being already this slow and making this much, look at this, 372k, man. And, I, and in a lot of cases, you don't need to use revives. You do need to use potions, though. And I don't. I didn't even use a lot of potions <laughs> in a lot of the games in which I, like, if they don't leave with a fighting type, you typically don't have to use potion because they're gonna switch out into their fighting type. So you get stealth work for free, and then you can switch into your ghost type or into your glide score. But like I said, I'm, I'll make a guide on this, guys. A, much, a shorter guide. And detailed to pull this off. Like, this is just showing and also showing a bit of the content, of course. Like, and we have one minute to spare, guys. We have one minute to spare, which is so extremely nice. Because look at this. We're almost hitting 400k just from money. And I am actually going to try to sneak it in. I don't think I'll get it. But I like to do... If if possible, I'd like to do these NPCs as well. This, this grandma and this grandpa. Because they, with an amulet coin, give eight, about 8k each. So if you battle them both at 16k, which is more than a gym leader. Obviously, it's a single battle, so you have to take some time. But look at this. There's one minute still. Two seconds, one second. But I should be able to beat this one before the time runs out. And remember, guys, we still have the battle points as well. We got from three regions, which is 6k, which is about 60k. Because if you have 100k, uh, if you have 10k battle points, you can buy a choice packs, which you can sell for more than 100k. So I really hope that I opened your eyes for this strategy because look at this, how much money this is. So what I'm actually going to do here is I'm going to stop the recording for a second and I'm going to check how many potions we used, the items we used. And we're going to calculate this because we are at 394.5k. So be right back guys. Okay, guys, we're back. Um, I did, I I did rewatch it a bit. Uh, so we started the run with nine hundred and twenty-eight potions, with twenty-two revives, and we had thirty-eight X speeds. I will edit it into the screen so you so it's visual to you guys. So. Right now, if we look at our items, you can see we have 810 uh, potions and 20 revives. So if, if we do the math right, then we used 118 potions and we used two revives. While a potion, guys, is 200 Pokéyen each. A potion is 200 Pokéyen each. 200 times 118 is 23.6k is what we used. A revive is 3.25k, uh, so 6.5k 6 is what we spend on potions and revives. And like I said, most of the times we don't need revives, but sometimes you misclick, sometimes you mess up, sometimes you're unlucky. So it's good to have revives in the back. 
Uh, we used X speeds, X speeds which you can buy for 2k. And <laughs> let me pause the video. The X items you buy in Lily Cove City. So uh, in this, in this, in Hoenn, in the Hoenn region, uh, this is where I buy them. On the third floor, the battle items, as you guys can see, an X speed is 2k. Uh, we have 23 now. Uh, when I look back, we started with 38. So essentially, we used um, we used 15 uh, X speeds, which is equivalent to 30k. So if we do the math right there, guys, if we do the math right there, uh, 30 30k. Or if we do the math, we used 118 potions, which which is 23.6k. We used two revives, which is 6.5k. We used 15 X speeds, which is 30k. And we used one paralyzed heal, which is 300 gold or 300, uh, or 0.3k. And we use an antidote, 0.2k. All of that combined is 60.6k. Obviously, we used an amulet coin as well, which I bought for 19k. I don't know if it's still 19k. It's even cheaper now, but about 19k. So if you add all of that, we invested 79.6k, which is about 80k is what we spent. But look at how much money we got. 394 point five however we got 6k battle points which is equivalent to 60k meaning we essentially from this run we got 455.50k 450 and if you rem if you distract 80k from it you get 347.50k so 375 375k what you got from one run guys which is way more than you're getting from a gym rerun which is more than 100k less so see how freaking efficient this is and i wasn't i wasn't even efficient in my run i made mistakes all of that like imagine if you are able to do this cleanly and this is just one hour guys we can still do Kanto and we can still do Chodo, which is what I'm going to show you in a next video as well. However, this is the run. This is the daily standard run for me. And it's a really good money making method guide. Like I, I've, I've been able to do this consistently. And um, so I'm really planning to put out the guide there. Explain. So I'm going to show you guys the EVs and explain the team. The strategy some tips and tricks to pull this off so let, let me know down in the comments if you want this <laughs> if you want the guy like this maybe this video is enough i don't know if you guys are able to watch a video like this but yeah really excited guys i'm actually gonna uh, record right after this i'm going to record ganto and jodo as well and then do the remaining gym re and then we can and we're just gonna look how much we get from two amulet coins in one day how much money we can get which is really interesting as well so yeah guys definitely make sure to subscribe to the channel hit that notification bell to know when these videos go live for you and yeah leave a comment down below like i said guys and yeah join our discord server if you have any questions if you have questions about this as well my name is afc adino if you do not know me i'm a pvp player and this is my money making method hope you enjoyed it Peace out, guys, and I hope to see you in the next one.